Okay, so let's press on and go through the seminar solutions. So question one is asking us capacitor and inductor connected in series, energized by an AC voltage supply. Let's turn this into a pen. Um, connected uh, AC voltage source frequency. So we've got the reactances of each component. So this is giving us um, relatively. So this is XC because the capacitor comes first and this is XL because it becomes second. That's what respectively means in this context. So what's the total impedance? So we're trying to find Z. So if we add these together we can use our equation for Z which we know before. Um, we get, because there's no resistance you can essentially ignore that term. So we end up with 0 squared plus XL minus XC all squared will give you an answer of 45 ohms. So that's the magnitude what about the phase angle? Well, basically, we can look at this and we can see that... Oh, that's the wrong way around. That should be plus 90. But anyway, go with me here. Okay. So what we've got is because the reactance of the inductor... So that should be inductor. Yeah, this is what happens when you work it out first thing. This is why you should always go through and double check your exam answers. Um, don't make silly mistakes. Just watch me doing it and then you don't have to. So because the inductor resistance is bigger than the, sorry, because the inductor reactance is bigger than the capacitor reactance, the phase angle is plus 90 degrees. So we can draw a phasor diagram if we want to check this out, okay? So we've got, first up, we've got no We've got no resistance, which means that the phaser doesn't have any dimensions in the x direction. So let's draw x, l, and x, c. So x, l is going to be 170 upwards. That should be a straight line. I fail at straight lines with this pointer. Okay, so that's, um, yeah, plus 170. And then we've got, from here, we can go in the other direction, and we've got z. C, which is slightly smaller, and that's essentially minus 125. So we end up with a resultant phasor that is 45, and it's at plus J, so it's at plus at an angle of plus 90 degrees, and that's all in ohms. So that's how you work that out, and that's it's a bit of an odd phasor diagram because it's not a triangle, but it does actually make our lives easier for sorting stuff out. Next up, question two, we're going to calculate all the voltage drops and the current in this LC circuit at each of the given frequencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through how we solve for 50 hertz and then it's just rinse and repeat for all the different frequencies. Because, as we'll see, that we need to find the reactances of the inductor and the capacitor and as we know these are frequency dependent. We know this expression, we've used this loads and loads. So the total source is equal to the square root of the voltage drop across the resistor. So this would be VR plus the overall voltage drop um, across the inductor and capacitor. And this is because we have to have this VL minus VC because they're operating to try and cancel each other out. Then we square it. Um, but that's not necessarily helpful because we've already got Vs. This is given to us at the beginning. What we need instead is the current, and we've not had this before. So how do we go about solving this? Well, unsurprisingly, it comes back to Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So if we want to get to the current, what we can do is we can alter our equation slightly. So we can say the source voltage, instead of equaling the sum of all those voltages, we can say it's the current multiplied by the resistance or reactance of all of these components. So that's why I've gone from VR to just R and I've gone from VL to XL and VC to XC. So that's what we've done here and we've got this I term here and that's what we're important, that's what we're trying to solve for. However, to get to that point we need to find the value of XL and the value of XC. So I've actually just added an extra little table onto here so I can keep track of the reactances at each frequency. This is entirely optional but I find it quite helpful. So let's find XL. XL is equal to 2 pi FL. You need to know this equation. And if you calculate that, I'm going to go for 50 hertz. It will give you an answer of, let me see, 103.7 ohms, according to my calculations. I'm just going to put that in my table. 
103.7, this is obviously in ohms, I should really put my units there. Um, now let's do xc, well xc is equal to 1 over 2 pi fc, and if you calculate that for 50 hertz, you get xc is equal to 318.3 ohms, so I'm going to put that in there, 318.3, and that's in ohms. Okay, so now we've got these values, we can substitute that in. Oh, I don't actually have that there. Okay, so let's just substitute. So we've got Vs is equal to I multiplied by, let's put in R squared because we know what that is. It's not frequency dependent, so it's 5 squared plus XL we've calculated is 103.7 plus XC, which is 318.3. Oh, sorry, that should be minus. What am I like? Go on dyslexic that's what squared if you're not dyslexic you should also check your calculations it's not just me that does this okay so if we calculate that what we can do is we can then see that we end up with um we've got vs that's 250 times 10 to the minus 3 as well is equal to i multiplied by all of that lot which is oh 214.7 or thereabouts okay it's worth saying that your answers may slightly vary from mine depending on how many degrees uh, of accuracy so how much decimal places you carry forwards so if you've got roughly the right answer that's absolutely fine don't beat yourself up about like three decimal places in it is really not worth it so if we rearrange for i we get i is equal to um, 116 milliamps at this frequency so we can put this in here so it's 1.16 milliamps now we have i we can use it to find the voltage drop across the inductor and then the voltage drop across the capacitor because we're still using ohm's law so now we've got v is equal to i times r but once again we don't have a value of R because it's a inductor in this case, so it's got a reactance instead, but that's still in ohms. So I'm going to substitute my value of I in times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by R, but we don't have R. We're going to use XL instead. Um, and XL is equal to, as we found before, 103.7. And if you substitute that in, you'll get VL is equal to... 0.121 volts so we should put that in 0.121 vc once again same process vc is equal to i times xc we know xc we now know i so we end up with vc is equal to 0.371 volts okay 0.371. So that's the process that you need to go through and for each operating frequency you'll need to recalculate the reactance of each component, recalculate the current and then recalculate VL and VC. And why am I getting you to do it at so many frequencies? Because it's good practice and it shows that you know what you're doing. So each of these values in this table is frequency dependent and as you see the frequency increase just have a look and see what happens to VL, VC and also the total current. So you should be able to ponder that one through and that's the answer to question two. Um, question three is a little bit more straightforward. Building a circuit and we need an impedance of 100, well, sorry, 1500 ohms at an angle of minus 41 degrees so we've got this frequency so this one is going in a slightly different way to we've done before so what we've actually got is we've got the total impedance z and we've got the magnitude of it and we've also got the phase angle remember this is relative to basically our real axis so this would be real and that's where we start from and because it's minus 41 we know we need to rotate in the downwards direction so what we're actually being asked to find now are the remaining components of this phasor diagram so we need to find the resistance and the reactance of the capacitor that goes with it and remember because it's negative um, we need to use a capacitor because inductors would give you a positive phase angle 
So let's find this. So for the resistor, just use trigonometry, okay? So we've got an angle and we've got the hypotenuse. We need to find the opposite and we need to find the adjacent. So to find R, R is the adjacent, so it's cos theta is equal to the resistance over the hypotenuse. I've just substituted these values in that we've already got. So the 1500 came from Z, which is the hypotenuse, and we've got the angle. If you calculate that, you get a resistance of uh, 1,132 ohms. So that's the resistance sorted. Now let's find the reactance of the capacitor. So we then need to find the value of the capacitor. So let's find the reactance first. Once again, use some trig this time. It's a sine function we need. Put your values in. This time we're after the opposite. We've got the hypotenuse. We've got the angle. Put those in and we get XC is 984.1 ohms. So far, so good, but we need the combination of components. So we need to really say we can't just leave it as a reactance. We should give the value of the capacitor. As we know, Xc is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. So if you rearrange to get the value of C, you end up with a capacitor value of roundabouts 269.6 nanofarads. So you know how to do all of this stuff, it's just getting you to approach the problem from a slightly different angle. Ba -bum -tsh, get it angle because you're given the angle rather than having to calculate it. Okay.